we're rolling. Hi, my name is Omar and I'm owner of Mena Video and Photography. And we're putting together a web series. And the web series is to give you insight into some of the things that a lot of uh, brides as they're planning their wedding may not know what to do when it comes to selecting their photographer. Now, me personally, of course, I think the photography is the most important part of the event, but when it comes to selecting the photographer, there's not really much of a guide as to how to get the right one. So there are seven things that you need to avoid when it comes to planning your wedding. And we're going to talk about number one today. And um, so, no, uh, huge mistake number one, not meeting the actual person who will be photographing your wedding. Mm -hmm. Now, the age of the internet, you know, we see somebody's work, we call them, we book them over the phone because they fit in our budget, but then you never actually meet until either the engagement session or the day of the event. We most definitely need to avoid that because you don't know if you're compatible with this person or not. You need to sit down with them, you need to spend some time with them, and ask them questions. Now, what questions do you ask? Here's the first one. Who did these photographs you are showing me? Now, um, a lot of uh, photographers get books and albums and samples of albums from companies so that they can uh, show the photographer the quality of their work. Now, there have been photographers who have actually passed this on as their own work you need to make sure that the photographs that they're showing you are done by that particular photographer. You need, you need to protect yourself in that sense. So ultimately you need to make sure that they show you samples of their work. Number two, who by name will be photographing our wedding if we hire your studio? Now in our case it's real easy. It's me and it's Lorenza. There's nobody else here. You hire us, we only do one wedding a day case closed. So it's easy to see our work, all our work's here, it's all our own work. Now in the case of the studio that hires out a couple of, uh, you know, they do a couple of weddings, you know, every Saturday, you need to make sure that you find out who's going to be the photographer for your event. Again, you need to make sure that you're compatible with this person, that this is someone that you like. Um, you know, if you have a very conservative family and somebody walks in with a mohawk and they got tattoos on their hands, they may be a phenomenal photographer, but they may not be what you'd expect. So you definitely want to ask by name, which leads us to the third question. We want to meet this person before we hire your studio. One of the things that happens in our studio is that uh, we might meet a young couple. They're super happy, they love the pictures, they love everything, they see the price and they're like, wow, this is way out of our budget. But because we clicked, they know that I come with a lot of experience and somehow they just turn around and just said, you know what, even though this isn't in our budget, we'll move some stuff around to hire uh, your studio because we like you guys. You know, we, f we think you will get just the right images, capture the perfect wedding, and I'll go over other reasons why they book us, but ultimately they, they know that we're going to be the ones who are going to be covering their event. So you most definitely want to meet the photographer before, the, before you sign any contract. Like don't sign and then ask to meet them. Now, so now we have the, Mohe, the Mohawk uh, photographer that's sitting in front of you. Uh, what questions do we ask them? Uh, number one, you want to ask them, how will you dress at my wedding? We don't want somebody showing up in jeans, you know, flip-flops and whatever. Like, we want to make sure that this person represents the studio well and represents you well. So you want to make sure that they're going to go dressed well. And that's something that you need to make sure that's on the contract as well. Uh, if you require a tuxedo, the photographer should know well in advance. Not, not all photographers own a tuxedo. And if you let them know the week before, they may not be able to um, get the tuxedo on with enough time. Like, it shouldn't be an expectation. It should be something that you guys talk about before you sign the contract. Number two, did you do all the samples of the wedding photography we saw in the sample books? If not, show us your work, please. This goes back again uh, where we were talking about, you know, you walk in, you fall in love with the pictures, but that may not be the photographer that shows up. It may be the owner who took those pictures, but the owner may not do uh, event photography anymore. 
So it is important to educate yourself again that the work that you're seeing in these sample books or the actual work of the photographer who's going to be taking the pictures at your event. Uh, number three, how long have you been photographing weddings? Now, uh, this could be misleading because someone could say 10 years, but maybe they've only done two weddings. So you want to ask not just how long they've been photographing, but you want to make sure how many events they've photographed. And in the case of our studio, we're over 300 events. So we're extraordinarily experienced when it comes to wedding photography, quinceanera, and events. So you want to make sure that these guys aren't learning on your um, aren't learning on your special day. So ultimately, asking them not just how long they've been uh, photographing, but you want to make sure how many events they've actually done. And uh, a good question that isn't something we always think you know, think about. But before you leave our wedding, who do you check with first to see if there's anything else we would like you to do? Now. Generally, uh, we've bucked a lot of traditions when it comes to the weddings, but on this particular uh, question, what I do with a lot of my clients is I ask them to delegate this to a maid of honor, best man, or mom. And it's, those are folks that know the family and may be like, oh, you know what, did you get a picture with you know, my aunt? You know, she's, this is the first time she's ever been here. She flew in just for the wedding. Um, because a, as a couple you might be distracted and may just turn around and be like no you did a great job take care but then at the end you're thinking oh man I wonder if you got this picture so you you ultimately want to make sure that the photographer checks in before he leaves um, for me just to kind of make sure that I check in I like to take a picture with a couple before I leave that way you know I have, number one, I have a, a nice uh, memory with a couple, but at the same time, it gives them the opportunity to say, oh, you know what, a coworker showed up late, let's take a picture. So you, you ultimately want to make sure that they check in before you absolutely leave. Uh, you want to ask, how long will they be at the wedding? Uh, one of the things is maybe your packet's only four hours long. Your event ends at 2 o'clock. You know? So if you have the photographer for that time, you ultimately want to make sure that you do everything that you want photographed within that time limit. So asking them how long they'll be there is super important. And then of course the last one, do you work from a checklist of photos? Now we, though I never mind being given direction by my clients, uh, we particularly don't work from a checklist. Uh, reason being is uh, we attend the rehearsals of every event that we do. It's important for us to attend the rehearsal because that's where I meet the VIPs. I meet grandma, I meet you know, both sets of parents, I meet the VIPs, I meet the godparents, I meet everybody because they're part, like you know, Friday if you have the rehearsal, they're there you know, at the church. And this gives you an opportunity to talk to the court. That way you'd let them know, hey, I need you guys to go slowly or when so-and-so gets to this part, I want you to walk. That way you can ensure the pictures because uh, there's been times where they just fly through there and that picture is missed. So you want to make sure that the photographer doesn't necessarily work from a checklist because if they're worth their salt, they will capture the picture anyway. But um, so you, you don't want somebody sitting there going through a list and the whole time, you know, there's a special moment happening and then they completely miss it. So um, giving them direction is one thing. Working from a checklist is something else. So ultimately, you want to make sure that the photographer is around. We go to the rehearsal. That's the way we avoid ever having to work off a checklist. So that was question number one, on, or not necessarily question number one, but huge mistake number one on how um, to avoid. It's one of the seven mistakes uh, when it comes to planning your wedding. And we'll come back with number two. And, you know, I hope this was enjoyable to you and informative. Um, I, I believe that this is absolutely something that you will benefit from because you'll go in as an, you know, just like you'll have the insight and the right questions to ask when it comes to selecting the photographer. This will get you off to a good start. So if you would like to reach us or leave us any comments, you can reach us at menavideophotography.com or you could call or text us at 915-694-5799.
And please feel free to reach out if you have any questions, even if we're not your photographer. We would love to be able to get some feedback from you on how this series benefits you. So thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next time.